Today we're checking out the internals of an ASUS X4... Um, what is this laptop again? The A416. So, this is the inside. But before that, the back cover is uh, plastic. And this is screwed in place with... Well, you can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. But... The screws are not all the same. No. Uh, the screws for the top and then these three screws in the, like, the middle is longer than the rest. Asus, please just use one standard size screw. So computer technicians don't have to keep an uh, idea of where the screws are meant to go. So checking out the internals of the laptop, we can see that the RAM is here. I don't believe there's any solid RAM. This is a... This is a 4 gigabyte equipped model and it only has a 4 gigabyte DIN. So the RAM should be in a sodium, which is good. Uh, I remember that Asus once had a that is not sorted, which is good. You can see where the DGPU would go if this was equipped with DGPU, but it's not, which is good also because I don't believe in the need for a low end DGPU. So, as mentioned in my unboxing video, the fan intakes here and it blows across the motherboard and VRMs and Wi-Fi card and the RAM and then goes through the fins here to cool the processor out of the side. I've got a space for a 2.5 inch drive. I, I wonder whether Asus equips some of the models without this drive but with a longer, more larger capacity battery although this laptop isn't that light to begin with and if they put a bigger battery it would probably be even heavier. We can see there is a daughter board here for the audio, combo jack, activity lights, the two USB 2.0 ports, and it's connected to the main board with a ribbon cable that sneaks underneath the fan. The speakers are not screwed in place, so keep that in mind. Um, so <clears throat> we have the SSD. This looks to be the standard M.2 2280 affair. It's an Intel SSD of the... Uh, 670p series, 512 gigs of capacity. And then we have the Wi Fi card here, which in this particular instance is a 9, 9461NGW affair, if I can read correctly. This is a lower end Wi Fi AC affair. You can see there is where the SATA cable will plug into. And there's something for FP. I'm not sure what FP would stand for. So the display cable comes from this hinge, wraps around here and then plugs into here. You got your BGA processor. And interestingly, not sure if you can see, but yeah, the copper heat pipe goes relatively flat and then it goes down into the uh, heatsink array. I do wonder if perhaps the uh, DGPU equipped variants will have a bigger heatsink because I don't think this is very adequate for a model with DGPU. You can see there is kind of like perforations at the top here which lines up with the perforations on this but these are not punched out here. And as far as you can tell, they're not used here for, for like cooling. And presumably, if you actually punch out the holes on the bottom case, they won't actually make the cooling better because this is a computer where the airflow is very important to go across the motherboard. And if you have holes at the back, it's going to like disperse the air and CPU performance will likely cripple. Your battery connector is there. And then presumably that's for your touchpad. Um, don't quote me on that. A couple of other ribbon cables here. The, the barrel jack seems to be soldered onto the motherboard. So you're going to have to resolder that if that wars out, which it can. And um, so, yeah. This is a system where you may want to just rely on the USB 2 ports primarily so that, you know, if you wear that much, you can just replace the, the daughter board. Fan plugs in there. And um, yeah, so. That is the internals, 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 internals of the ASUS A416e. This is probably shared with a whole bunch of other ASUS models. As, uh, as you know, economies of scale, share one chassis for many different products. It just makes sense. Thanks for watching.